is ASDP ufologist Jody Brown from Arizona, and you are watching Alien Strand Podcast with host Donald Ledesma. I believe it was five separate craft. That's some straight UFO shit right there. That's when I started seeing all of the lights and, and, and the, the contact that, that I've been witnessing. kept filming and looking up at the sky and it just started happening more frequently. Look, what is that? What is that? What was that? Welcome to this episode of Alien Strand Podcast. I'm your host, Don Ledesma, and welcome to today's show. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a good one today, man. You know why? Because we're going to step on some toes today, man. We're going to step on some toes. So, hey, it's okay because that's what we're about. We're about ufology. You know, uh, thank you guys for watching tonight. You know, we had a little mess up there. and It, it, it happens every once in a while here on the podcast. But it's okay. You guys are there to watch. You know, uh, we got Facebook users out there already, already watching to see what the heck we're going to talk about, Terry and I. So today, Terry's going to be on the show. And, uh, you know, he'll be coming up here in just a second. You know, people saying, glad to, glad to be here, guys. You know, hey, today what's going on you know we are all out there man ready to, to give you some uh really really uh deep deep information right and and that's what we're about here you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna step into it you know what i mean we're gonna step into all that goodness you know that we we always talk about but you know what don't forget to catch us on Patreon. Hey, it's growing a little bit here and there. There's a couple of people that jump on board on Patreon. Thank you, guys. Even the free ones, man. Come on board. Come on board. Just come check us out on Patreon. I really appreciate that. You know, there's some stuff that comes out. You know, it'll come out for members for about a week, and then you guys get to see, get to see it as well afterwards. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's there's other stuff that you guys don't get to see on Patreon, but, you know, it's okay. It's a give and take. That's what it is. Join us there on Patreon if you can. Download the app. It's awesome, man. And you know what? 
<laughs> Somebody just threw it out there. Are you naked? Uh, no, don't get naked. I don't want to see nobody naked tonight. You know, uh, catch our podcast, our past podcast, A War Underground. And then the last one uh, we did with uh, Mr. Uh, Mike Figurito. Man, he was he an amazing guest on our show. I just love him to death. He he got deep, man. I mean, deep into our our conversation about consciousness man and contact and just because he wrote a a, a book you know that's a, a, a fiction or you know it 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 still it had a lot to do with a lot of his personal encounters so please go check out those two that are out there right now on, on uh alien strand podcast if you can't just go look for it alien strand podcast google it alien strand podcast you'll find us everywhere it'll show you all the latest updates that we have uh, of course tonight with mr terry lynch and ourselves it's called a deep veil cover-up right and we're gonna we're gonna talk about people that are just kind of covering it all man and you know what no man no that's not gonna happen that is not going to happen. We're gonna we're gonna let this out to um, so that way you guys can know. <clears throat> even out there in Audio Land, we are live right now, actually on speaker. So if you guys are, are driving your vehicles, you know, please be careful on the road. Thank you for listening tonight. You know, truck drivers, bus drivers, anybody out there that is listening, thank you for listening to the show as we're talking live. You know, uh, keep your eyes on the sky. If you got to take a picture, throw it up, go off the side of the road. Don't do it while you're in the vehicle if, you, if it's safe to do so. Take your pictures, videos, all that good stuff. All right, remember DOT rules, man. You have to, man. I was, I used to be a CDL off a CDL driver myself. You know, I recently lost it. Eh, I'll get it back. I, I promise you, I'm gonna get it back. Now, watch the middle tetralogy. We have part one out there right now. Uh, we have part two that that is out on a few platforms. It's on uh, Skylight Channel One or Skylight One Channel, actually. Go check it out there. Uh, you'll you'll see it on Facebook. And uh, we have the middle three that's almost done on every on editing and everything. That one's gonna be coming out next. All right. So if you have if you guys want to go to Skylight One, go look for it on Facebook. Jo- I mean, it's it's freebie too, man. Just join in if you want to, and you can watch all our movies there as they come out. You know, they're going to be all oh, these films are going to be coming out. They're going to be a lot of great, great information, right? Uh, of course, we're waiting for uh, the. Okay, this is the channel Skylight One channel. It's on Vimeo. If you want to look for it there, you can find it there as well. But there's links to it on our Facebook page. So go to our Facebook. It's the easiest thing, and you'll be able to find it, all right? So uh, of course, the middle part one still kicking butt out there on Tubi TV, Amazon Rewarded. Hoopla, all these great channels. You know, thank you guys for watching the film and getting a lot of, out of it. We're waiting for it on Amazon Prime. It's going to be coming out here soon. Now, the most important part of this whole thing of Alien Strand uh, is Alien Strand Disclosure Project, right? Because there's no I in team. We all work together as one to to get out all the information as possible, you know, on a ufology, disclosure, Bigfoot, you know, paranormal. You know, we haven't really ju- dove into the paranormal yet, as much i really want to get into that too man so if you guys are into the paranormal you guys have a lot of good footage videos hey man come join me over here give me a holler we'll put you on the show too so we can get you you on there you know we do study paranormal as well you know i I like to throw some of that out there too for the folks that are really digging that kind of stuff as well you know um tonight you know uh of course we're gonna bring in um mr terry lynch because he hasn't been on the show for a while he's been busy man he's been busy and he's gonna tell you about it uh so here we go come on mr terry lynch let's go ahead and have some pretty good deep conversations here we go hey everybody how's it going <clears throat> terry lynch asdp ufologist terry lynch from oregon ufology and research right. um I'm, I'm really happy to be here tonight. We get to talk about some things that uh, we're we're going to talk about the people that block the way for disclosure. Uh, there's a lot of people that we like to call gatekeepers and disclosure, and we're going to expose some of those folks tonight. Yeah. Um, as Donald was saying, we're going to step on some toes. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, and and Donald talking about CDLs and things like that. Nobody's seen me around for a little while because I've been studying to trying to get my CDL. Um, I'm right on for becoming a bus driver, you know, for the school district. Right on. So Good let's see you. what happens next. Good for you, bro. Concrete bags have become too heavy for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I get it. <clears throat> I get it. Uh, so today, you know, we, we brought you on board, uh, and congratulations on getting going on your CDL. I'm glad. I'm happy for you, brother. And, you know, we're all pushing Thank you. you know, out there. And uh, we know, of course, you are a mastery expert as well on ufology. And, you know, we we haven't had to do UAP uh, weekly uh, as much because we've just been busy doing all different kinds of things, right? But... That's right. Today, I'm going to give a little a little bit of a surprise before we we, we dive into that deeper part of uh, governments and all that good stuff. So we do have a couple of videos. All right, uh, I'm going to throw out three videos tonight, and we're just going to talk about them real quick. And I want you guys to see these videos. And uh, you know, it's it's um, this first one uh, was just recently posted, and I saw it, and it kind of blew me away because the way this this UFO looked, it would it flew by very slowly, but you know what intrigued me about this UFO is that on the very bottom of this, as it's flying by, it almost looks like an upside down boat, right? Uh, oh, and, wow. this, and this is what you, you've always talked about, how the, they have these flux tubes and things that kind of move underneath these crafts. Now, this video is actually going to show it. So tonight in Audio Land, uh, it's going to just be a video. It's, this actually happened at night. Somebody changed the, the, the analysis on it to make it kind of look like a daytime shot. So it's going to look like almost daytime. It's in a gray form. Uh, but here we go. We'll, we'll be able to talk about it as it's plain. So here we go, Terry. So this one was shot actually uh, in Sweden on February 6, 2024. Look at it. Here, here it goes. Is that a cool shot or what, Terry? That is a really good shot. <clears throat> it almost looks like an airplane flipped upside down or a boat. Uh and the direction that it's going. Uh, this was, like I said, it was in Sweden. Um, I mean, it, it's just inverted. It, it It's a UFO, mm -hmm. if, if you really look at it, without the bottom piece, <coughs> kind of going across the sky, but at a just a, a straight trajectory, no, no high speeds, anything like that. Um, what are your thoughts about that, that video there real quick? Well, again, uh, most of these craft... If you if you think about how many different types of cars and motorcycles and airplanes and how every year we got the newer better model, um, this this is a good example of this is something that that uh, whoever they are of course uh, have produced and this is the new model or maybe it's a, an old model we've never seen before. Right. But it's it's definitely something that's unique in comparison to the other things that we see in the sky and a lot of people uh there you know there's more than more than just me that sees these things on a regular basis um i'm, I'm assuming that 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 right there uh once i put it under my filtration systems and start looking i'm going to see the i'm going to see the exactly what i'm expecting to see well because you could kind of actually see it with your eyes right. uh you can see kind of a uh, uh, aura or a magnetic EMF on it, yeah. Basket, yeah. It's kind of an EMF basket that's around it. Uh, um, it's that's that's let's see, they call it a magnetic flux tube basket, is is the actual scientific term for anything that they use uh, to to do uh, quantum levitation. Right. So it would put a it would be putting a magnetic flux tube basket around the craft, and that's that little distortion, which is again why you don't see things perfectly every time. Right. Well, um, I, I I did your job for you as you talked about right now. I I decided <clears throat> to go ahead and do that a little bit of it, not much, just a little bit. So here's okay. here's what I broke down. And I put it. Oh, in, good job! And I, and I put it in in filters for you guys out there. So in in audio, audio land, we just do it in a in a yellow uh, spectrum, like uh, what is it called? Ele electromagnet or something like that. Electromagnetic. You yeah. have atomic, atomic, and you have yeah. uh, what looks like. Uh, I think you got one there in the negative. Yeah, that that was the original one, the the one on the left, and then. Each one is the original, which is the ones on, on the on the grayish kind of black and white. What I did was I, I brought the color out a little bit, uh, not the color, the the, the, the lightness, and then uh, I, I added a little bit more sharpness to it and definition. That's why you see a little bit more of the line on it. 
um, as it was yeah. as they're flying by. And I kind of thought about, it, is this CGI or anything like that? But then I started seeing the electronic magnetic field around this thing. Uh, and I got I zoomed in just a little bit more here so you guys can see it out there in video world. Uh, you can see the outline of this thing, that there's something there. There's yeah, you see the thing there. on the bottom sticking down. Uh, this this right here is what the United States Navy would call the gimbal. Right. Um, that this yeah, that's exactly what this would be is what the Navy would call the gimbal craft. Uh, when I see something like that, I I say that's a counterweight. Right. Okay. Uh, the craft itself, they they turn using counter steering, and um, they grab onto. Uh, like the ley lines that right. are on the earth. Right. They grab onto those ley lines like an anchor and they turn. And basically when they turn, they're using geometry. So what that is, is that that reaches out and it grabs down to the planet and it um, it's throwing a, a magnetic flux tube down to the planet. And then it's using that as the way to turn the, the craft itself. So if, if you notice in a lot of things, a lot of the videos, you'll see the craft do this, and it turns right. immediately. Right. And like our jets, they take a long sweep out. These these things, what they do is they they spit something like that out, which is a counterweight, right. which also helps with this turn. And it's shooting down magnetic flux tube down to the earth, and it's grabbing on it, and it's turning like on a dime. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, because because it's using that and it's using the bottom of that craft with that beautiful flux uh, basket that you're showing around this craft. Right. Um, uh, the green one, the green and the red one, really show it well. And this was in Sweden. Um, in Sweden. Uh, that's in Sweden. Yes. Uh, so we have uh, we have another video real quick. I, I hate to jump forward, but let's let's go ahead and jump forward just oh, that's a little great. bit. Great. Uh, we have another one here, so I'm going to throw out this video real quick. It's kind of short. So on this one, the story is, it's, uh, it says, on October 21st, 2022, um, in the morning at 52, uh, I guess it says it was almost 1 o'clock in the morning, uh, in the area of Wales, right, that, that this, uh, it was a black pyramid, and this object was uh, ups in an upside-down position, was highly visible with clearly activity within um, later in the observation, became clear as it was being uh, operated by one controller, right? So here we go. Here, this is where we come in deeper, right? Uh, it says, despite the science, this is not this is not possible, right? It says, I'm confident that to accept the realism that what we observed and was being filmed occurred was a UFO uh, depart, right? It was like uh, it was demonstrating some kind of... Uh, uh, acceleration and then it stopped in front of them so what you're going to see here is going to be it's kind of dark i lightened it up as much as i could so you can kind of see so you're going to see the the you know how most uh pyramid or or maybe tr3b's they have this bubble of light or something under it okay mm -hmm. on this one it came down so low that they got a really good shot <clears throat> you can see the pilot inside of this thing moving okay so uh we're going to go ahead and show that now so we can check this out all right here we go So there's the bubble you can see it at the very top, and you start. It, it goes in slow motion. So oh yeah, you can see him moving. Yeah, he's moving inside of there. You see, clearly you see him moving in there, <coughs> moving around, and this is inside that bubble of this craft. It's like he's looking through yeah. the through the window or the glass or what the bubble, whatever. You know, you know, uh, when I first started out in all this. Um, I had joined a Strange Happenings group, and uh, Jody called these a one-seat bubble. Yeah. Look at that. You and you you can clearly see it. Okay, so Jody, Jody's a ufologist out of Arizona, and then there's a ufologist out of, uh, out of Australia. His name is Carlos. Right. And he brings these things up. He, he does all kinds of different... By the way, he's a trucker. Nice. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he he's really good at bringing uh, craft in, and you can see these different things that are um, inside the craft once he starts doing his filtration process. And he he really shows a good, uh, kind of a vivid um, explanation of what's going on inside of that craft. And usually you can see one person uh, sitting at what looks like a computer type 
system right. or a control panel with like a computer coming up and you can see them actually sitting there like we do in a car. <laughs> and on many occasions, uh, when it's a much larger craft, you can see several different beings inside that craft as well through his filtration process. So Carlos, I appreciate what you've done and shown me and taught me. Uh, and Jody Gordon, uh, thank you for the things that you've shown because this this is uh, what we normally would call a one c bubble. And this right here, it looks like it might be a little bit bigger than a one c bubble. I mean, that's that looks like a pretty large craft with with something in front with someone or something running running the craft on the inside. Now, I I lightened it up as much as I could before it just starts distorting real bad, but it almost looked like inside that bubble where he's at with it i guess it's a pyramid sort of shape there's lights mm -hmm. all the way around this bubble uh like almost lights around it um around that area where he's at so you can almost see little luminous lights on the left side and the bottom of this bubble and then uh only when i brought this the 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 the, the, the brightness out of it and then the, the more detailed you can actually see what's going on inside of that thing but you definitely can see something moving uh, around in there um uh, they're definitely moving inside yeah. of it. So we got, and I could kind of, I could kind of see the pyramid shape to it as well, yeah. with the different lights that were lit up and at the far corners in the dark. Yep. You could actually see a pyramid shape. So we have we have Eric <coughs> Erica Garcia says hello, excellent group, uh, and and especially you guys have the guts to speak of what's going on. It says first time seeing UFO. I was eight years old. You know, um, we have Billy Barnett out there. Barnett, I'm sorry, he says hello. Uh, Shannon is out there as well. You know, uh, Andrea De Devina Ortiz is out there. Everybody's watching tonight. I'm sure Marisol's watching out there too. And speaking of Marisol, I'll tell you what, we got a video that. All right. She made that she put out there. Okay. So, um, yeah, she gets good stuff. She gets really good she stuff. She does get good and stuff. She's, she's an ASDP ufologist. Right. And she threw this out there the other day because something that she shared. And, uh, mm -hmm. and this is almost going to look like the Jonathan Reed, uh, UFO that was on the ground that, that he saw that kind of triangular looking thing that was floating on the, on, on the grass. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and watch this. Here we go. Oh yeah. See that? Yeah, I was actually going to bring this up. And and watch uh, and this wa watch what it does at the end though. See how they're kind of walking oh, around it, it, looking at it, and then mm -hmm. the darn thing shoots off like in an instant. And it's like bam. Right there. It was gone. There it goes right, yep. right there. It was gone. It, was, it, was it gone. looked like it raised up, raised up instantly, and, and yeah, this is this is actually something I was I was going to bring up. I had seen um, um, ASDP ufologist Paul Wilbur. Uh, he he had shared this also uh, within our group, and this this is something that uh, is really intriguing. This looks like something that uh, that's pretty much talked about in Egyptian uh, with their glyphs on their uh, pyramids. Right. And, and it's, 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 this is a, bl a black, it almost looks like an arrowhead sort of, but floating there. It doesn't look very big. It looks like. What, what, I was going to say, it looks like it's obsidian like, or, what, or at least the salt. Like two feet, maybe as big as it probably is about two feet big. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look very big at all. So, no, it doesn't. You, you know how we hear about these extraterrestrials that are small, you know, little beings or small little guys. Um, it's a possibility that maybe, you know, something is, you know, coming. Maybe it's one of those little guys that are inside of one of these uh, crafts. You know, something's driving this thing, or is it a uh, a drone of some sort, right? And, right, right. And got spotted at that split second while it was somebody was close enough to film it right um it, it's just i i, I don't know it, it, it and it does look just like the one from jonathan reed have you ever seen that 1990 i think it's 1994 96 i mean when he's he beat the hell out of this alien because it killed his dog it ripped the dog's head open 
right open in front of him and he freaked out so bad that he picked up a branch it was an alien and he beat the heck out of it uh knocked it out unconscious until he brought it home uh and he's like mm -hmm. he's breathing so hard in that video that i mean every time i watch it it's like i get anxiety just by listening to mm -hmm. him breathe, just like listening to him breathe i don't get anxiety man it just kind of freaks me out by the way he's breathing so it's like and a lot of people tried to discredit him and said all different kinds of bad things about that he made it up, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I, I still don't know the full story. I asked him to be on our show uh, one time, so we're still kind of waiting on that. Maybe yeah, ho Hopefully he jumps on our show one of these days, and I really would love to interview him, you know, and just kind of, you know, get his insights in a little bit more depth. I like to ask different kind of questions than everybody else. So, you know, yeah. I, hopefully to get somebody. What are your thoughts about that that thing? Well, I, you know, I, I see something like that right there, and I, I'm pretty sure at some point here with the, the type of exploring that uh, uh, Oregon Ufology and I do together, um, we're going to run across this. We're going to run across that. We're going to run across something that's very similar. Right. Um, I've seen I've seen so many things up in the skyline around here that um, fit so many different descriptions. Uh, one night we saw we saw it was four craft that were in the exact same line frame. Um, I I I was getting pizza at the local pizza place and I stopped in the parking lot and looked up right. and I started seeing what I saw and this you know I I didn't have my phone or I didn't have anything with me I didn't didn't have anything but there was a guy that was standing over beside me he he saw me staring up at the sky and he's like what are you looking at and he looked up there. And he could see between clouds. This is directly over Polina Peak, and there were clouds. There was a break in the clouds, and you could see these beautiful fireball lights going between the clouds. Wow! And it was one right after the other. It was it was a total of four of them. Wow! That went by. Now this type of thing, um, again, I I see stuff like that, and I think to myself, is this what the Native Americans were seeing when when they? came up with like the Clovis arrowhead or spearheads and things like that because it looked like something that could do something because the the speed that they move right and the fact the fact of the matter is is I'm one of those people that believe that most of these spears that you see right and most of the uh, most of the pointy kind of craft I, I believe that they're all all mostly made out of like obsidian and basalt right. not a metal. Not anything like that, but I think that's exactly what they're made of. A lot of the stuff coming from inner Earth, from within the Earth. Um, we we have a uh, uh, mini documentary that we call The Hive. Um, well, a lot of these craft are coming from right out of these volcanoes. Um, we have uh, Tibur Tiburino Sanchez I down love, in Mexico. I love him. Showing all these... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he doesn't speak a word of freaking English, but boy, do we we talk. Oh yeah, yeah. Love <laughs> I him. mean, we we have uh, we we have translation uh, capabilities on our phones, so we actually have long, good conversations. He actually sits down. He does. Um, he he goes and he's he's like the the main speaker at some of these big UFO yes. uh, conventions down in Mexico. Yes, and he. I mean, he knows. He knows everybody down there that's involved with this and he's he's a you you know one, one of our guys he's asdp yes he is this guy this guy is somebody who he knows his business um at some point you and i hopefully will will have a nice little tour with him down there and we'll go get to see the this volcano that keeps popping up and that's showing where, us all the different wonderful things. That's where I want to meet him in Popocatapel. I want to meet him at, on that volcano. That's exactly if, right. If me and you can go over there and meet him and, man, just shoot and shoot and shoot with our video cameras, I swear to God, we're going to get something. Um, let's go ahead and move forward, and let's go Let's go ahead and dive into this thing. Oh, ab absolutely. Right, hey, right. anybody say anything about more cowbell around here? <laughs> I'm ready, brother. I'm ready. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. So, as everybody knows and everybody watches our podcast, we are strictly rated G. 
for everyone, right? Yeah, we don't cuss on here. We don't do any of that stuff. Every once in a while, one might slip out or darn or crap or whatever. But we keep it family I'm friendly. Taking my hat off. Yeah, taking the hat off. We do not take our clothes <laughs> off and we do not show nudity. Okay? Okay? No, so that no is, nudity. That is not happening. If you guys know me, know me and Terry, you know, that is not happening. All right? So. We've been flagged down on how many, so many times for nudity. I don't know how that happens. How did that happen? Uh, okay. So now that we're going <laughs> to, I'm going to get away from that for a minute. I stopped shaving. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty naked. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped shaving. <laughs> so let's talk about the beginning, right? How the, the, this all started, uh, you know, the government involvement, right? And, and how, you know, this, this is a little bit deeper than it, it, it should be right. Uh, because, you know, when when we talk about the the capabilities of covering up a lot of uh, UFO dis, uh, you know uh, disclosure and things that recently come up, we always get you know people that side get sidetracked, right? And so I wanted to just talk about this a little bit. You know how this all started from the very beginning. You know how we always talked about Eisenhower and 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 how you know he had this meeting and something. You know so. I'm just let me just read this to you real quick. It says so on February 20, 1954, uh, Eisenhower interrupted his vacation in Palm Springs, California, to make a uh, a trip right to Air Force, Air Force Base to meet two extraterrestrial aliens. Right, and we you know we we all started talking about how you know he disappeared for a couple of days. He came back, and then you know, uh, and after that, you know, it, it, they start wondering, okay. What did he do? Where did he go? Then and then there was a lot of sightings and things that were happening during that that time, um, and they they kind of put a lot of things together that you know what he went to go meet these people um, as far as Nordics, and this is what I get the story of, right? That you know, um, and and he he just they, they, he tried to that's, I, I'm just put it this way. He kind of made a deal with the devil. Let's just put it that way, right? In a sense, uh, to where they, they were gonna, you know, kind of give us technology in in return, trade off for uh, human beings, right? And and that was the the whole trade off of the thing that happened because there was a large quantity, uh, quant- there was a large uh, just. A, a lot of sightings during that time, right? During the 1940s all the way to the 1960s uh, while he was president. He just happened to be there at the right time when this meeting uh, occurred, right? And uh, so, and it says that, that he met with these these aliens that were Nordics, right? And it says in the UFO circles, they, uh, they resemble Scandinavian humans. It says... Uh, they traveled to Edwards Air Force Air, Air Force Base uh, with a solar system with a flying saucer. Uh, at Sala, this was this person, says they spoke to Eisenhower. Uh, there was telepathic communication, um, he says, as he sits in his suburban and falls church living room. This is guy that is explaining everything. He says, um, I guess he was there, right? And he says, um, he says, even though you're, it's like you're hearing them in person, but they're not speaking. This is what this guy said. Right, that was there uh, in this whole conversation, and, and then he says he says they were afraid we might blow ourselves up with with nuclear technology, right? And that's why they did this trade off, you know, because because they they didn't want us to 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 get too far deep in, into you know human existence, taking us out of the whole picture, right? But so they did this trade off with with uh, humans, and he said, okay, you could take a few million of us, and that's exactly what was happening. Take a few million of us and, you know, give us some technology. But at the same time, they said that Eisenhower was not going to give up the nukes. He did not want to give up the nukes at all. So and and that was the, the whole deal behind that, how all this started. Right. Um, well, I mean, what are your thoughts on that, Terry? I mean, just just that whole story alone, how it how it breaks itself down. Well, it, it sounds an awful lot like uh, uh, ca- the the the. General Byrd, Admiral Byrd. Yeah, right. It sounds it sounds a lot like his story. Um, the the description of the people that you're talking about would be Polydians. right? Um, they're they're kind of a Nordic looking, uh, tall, blonde race of uh, no blonde hair, blue eyes. Um, that that's that's what it sounds like to me. I'm I'm also willing to bet that. Uh, uh, old Adolf Hitler there 
I'm sure he's run across them too with the technology that was coming out of his country right. at that t- at that same time frame. Um, so you got what you've got here is is there was a they were reaching out to us. Um, we weren't willing to give up these very destructive weapons. Um, I'm, I'm a, assuming that the reason, uh, one of the main reasons, more than humanity itself. But one of the main reasons they wanted us to get rid of these atomic bombs, atom bombs, hydrogen bombs, uh, was because they would create a uh, uh, magnetic pulse wave, or uh, you, you, you know, when we when we shut everything off, right? Every, all of a sudden, we don't have any more power to anything; it melts everything. When, when we have these type of weapons, um, it, it creates it creates this this thing that pulls uh, not only people but electronic things, which their crafts would be made of, uh, their crafts operate on. So it, it it would it would drop if if we started setting these things off, it would drop their crafts right to the ground. Right. You know. Right. Uh, same thing with a Tesla car or. A, or uh, Harley Davidson, for for that matter, it, it, if it has any kind of electricity, it's going to stop the vehicle. It's going to turn off your power in your home. It's going to well uh, render anything that has anything to do with elect- electricity or electronics. And you can and you dead. can you can kind of think about his thinking or his thought process if this really happened or it occurred, right? His thought process. I'm mm-hmm. the, I'm the commander in chief, right? Uh, now this this podcast is, is not political. We're not getting into t- politics, but you know I'm the commander in chief, no. you know, and I have to do right what's right to to protect the country. Now, if that's our biggest weapon that we have to protect ourselves from anything out there, of course he's not going to give up the nukes, right? He's not going to because that is the most powerful weapon that we have really in existence today. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so. You know, it's like somebody can be telling you, "Yeah, give it, give it up, give it up," and then they come back and they attack you, right? Yeah, and was, right. So you have to be, uh, you have to be alert at all times. So I, I get that part. You know why he probably did that and didn't give it up if this meeting happened, right? And and it, it just gets deeper uh, and darker as as you keep going into the rabbit hole, right? In a sense, to where there was right. a, there was a yeah. lot of uh, a lot of sightings back in the day. If you step backwards in time and you look at, uh, at back to the writings on the wall again, um, you'll see things where Gilgamesh, everybody remembers Gilgamesh, the epic of Gilgamesh. Um, they show they show different types of weapons that show arrows going in every direction with a with a big mushroom type cloud, and um, there's there's places all the way down in India that that. Uh, uh, it, you can you can see where a nu- like a nuclear attack had taken place. Uh, the same thing in South Africa. There's a place that used to be what they called a a uh, Anunnaki uh, slave uh, location where they were were going after gold. Um, you can you can see all these things where the Anunnaki were the ones that were running this place. I think about the giant doorways and. All the giant things that used to actually walk around this planet that were right. uh, like, you know, we're little we're little people to these, and we're slave race to these things. Um, according according to everything that's ever been written about it, uh, we were we were a slave race. I mean, if you think about this guy, if you look at the pictures of him, he's holding a, a full blown lion under his arm like a cat, right? Like it's a kitten, right? Uh, and and then you you see all these other what we would almost call fictional beings um like a, a like a giant human with uh <coughs> either a, a hawk's head excuse me uh, like a hawk's head and you see this all over the middle east and then you go down to um uh, all the way down into uh peru and you see the same things on incan things and you see the same thing on mayan things right up in mexico and all of these different cultures you have you have basically it's the exact same thing 
So what I'm what I'm thinking here is is we had we had all of this stuff tied together at one point. Uh, we call it Pangea when it was one giant continent, the whole thing. And then uh, we we had this thing come down and really screw us up. Um, and it was it was like a big meteor that came in and bam, it took out the dinosaurs, which were also moving around. And it broke up all these things into different plates. Well, and we all started drifting apart, continental drift. Let's let's talk about the 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 sheet here. So this is a UFO fact sheet, right? That was out there from 1947 to uh, 1969. So during the time of Eisenhower, or before him as well, even after, there was a total of 12,618 sightings, right? That were a total of sightings. And then the ones that were unidentified were 701, right? Which means they just right. couldn't, they couldn't identify these craft at all, right? Uh, of course, using the Project Blue Book uh, and and with Heineck and just trying to figure out all these that were that were happening, right? These total sightings, and you know, which kind of brings you to, hey man, these things were happening back then, right? And and why not have the meetings uh, with these extraterrestrials or or Nordics or Norwegian looking or, or whatever it was, you know, and and, and just kind of make a deal, right? H- how do we figure right. that 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 didn't happen? So I mean, let's let's move over, let's move over a little forward into the future. Let's go a little bit forward. So then, right. well, then uh, you know, when Project Blue Book starts coming out, then we start coming out with with. Uh, Things behind the veil, which is, you know, the the cover ups that happen after, you know, all these things, all these government programs, you know, the the black money that starts, you know, generating. It's probably been around for a freaking long time. We just don't didn't recognize it until now, right? And um, right, I mean, and and then they use a lot of people, sort of behind the veil, right, uh, to to cover up a lot of the real things that are happening. Now, if you notice, there was 12,000 sightings, brother, and then only 700 mm-hmm. came out um, in their report that were unidentified out of 12,000. So, so it doesn't make sense. You know, there was probably a lot of hush-hush back then and covering up as well. Mm-hmm. So how do we know even if that number is accurate uh, as it is? You know what I mean? Well, that's that's to protect religion and government. Um once once you introduce this third party, um, you have to start putting government and and religion into question. Um, and that's that's what his main goal was was to try and cover up. They this is where the cover up started, really, probably at its its peak. Uh, they they start giving a uh, not only is it cover up, but anybody who mentions it, well, it's little green men and you're crazy. Right. Uh, let's, let's label you with a tinfoil hat and let's, uh, let's say that, uh, you, you know, you're crazy. You, you don't, you don't have, uh, the, the capability of talking to a large group of people and telling them that this is something that you've seen and, um, this is what everybody else should be looking for. And that's that's pretty much pretty much how it happens. You end up with this stigma of uh, the crazy guy who saw the UFO. And uh, did you ever did you ever see um, um, what is that ID four the movie? Uh, yeah, where where the guy's sitting in there trying to tell everybody about the UFO. Yeah, and immediately there's two ass clowns sitting at the bar. Right. And they're talking about, did you get probed and did you this, right. did you, well, no, that's not what happens every time. Um, you know, it's only, only on the X-rated version of our show will we talk about that anyway. Right. Anyway. And, uh, that thing was Randy, <laughs> Randy Quaid. Now, um, I, I, I'm going right. to show a video here. This is going to tie into what we're talking about. And this is going to get deep right here, okay? So if you guys are watching and listening tonight, this came off of a different podcast. I, I tried to share it on my Facebook or wherever. And uh, it kind of tells you the story of what's happening now, today, of how... They're using larger um, 
they're using people that are more popular. I'm going to put it to you that way. They use people that are more popular in this in this industry, or uh, I'm not going to say business because to me it's not a business. We're 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 scientists in a way. We're 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 trying to find disclosure at the same time, right? So we're almost like news, and 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 we we're were, more we, like media, yeah, yeah. We're more like media. So and and these people that they find, they find they make sure that they have a large fan base, and they start reaching out to them, under you know behind the veil. Right. And that's why I call this podcast Behind the Veil, because I want you guys to, to listen to this and watch this. If you guys are in audio land driving, listen up to this podcast, uh, this you know video that I'm going to show you real quick. It's about two minutes and 23 seconds. Not very long. Just listen up. Check this out. Here we go. Either there is sufficient energy within Congress and within the Senate in relation to this subject, or is it still kind of trying to kindle a fire that isn't quite burning yet? I think. We need to kindle the fire a little more. I think we need to put pressure on our our leaders. And I think we need a leader in the White House who eventually will say, you know, enough is enough. I'm going to come aboard with this stuff. Get out of my way. I want to get the information now and let's get it. Because I, I really don't think we're going to get to where we need to be. Because they're going to move the target. They're going to lie to us. They'll move the locations and. You know, I don't get too hung up on locations and stuff because by the time we get there, it's like somebody was wanting to take up Odell, which is a congressional delegation, I think, ripped uh, Area 51. And, you know, we can all get our picture made in front of the signs that say, yeah, yeah. deadly force can be used. We'll go to the little alien, the bar, you know, and, and that kind of stuff. And I just don't think we'll get to see too much. Well, it's like you said, recently I saw you were on Tucker Carlson. Uh, he's very interested in this subject and yep. in a, a real approach. And I, I think obviously big audience, big, big audience uh, caught your uh, short kind of segment with him. You're right about one of your concerns that you highlighted, which is that you don't feel comfortable quickly sharing photographs or any kind of evidence that might be given to you because... Disinformation, I think, is one of the, the real problems with this particular subject. I mean, it's been rife within this particular subject for decades anyway. Uh, people polluting the waters, going to these UFO conferences, you know, shady spooks who give you a little whisper in the ear and send you going down a narrative that doesn't quite make sense. And I think right now, for people like yourself who are pushing at the front, that's a genuine risk. Do you feel like there may have already been attempts to get you to traffic in disinformation? Oh, 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. And the trick is there's there's some of them that are doing it that are, in my opinion, are don't know they're doing it. They're the most effective ones. They've been given false information and and they've got a huge following and and they're they're a fraud. They're a fraud. That was the key thing that he says at the very end of that. They're a fraud. Right. Because they're spreading disinformation, right? And, you know, we've recently had uh, the Las Vegas alien, right? That that, that was the most powerful one that we got when it first came out last year. Uh, What was it? July. And, 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 And when it came out, you know, everybody was on top of this this uh, angel guy right and and they right. they wanted to find out the truth and then all of a sudden it starts getting polluted with all different kinds of different narratives no it wasn't a UFO. right it was this, it they, was... they went different directions with it right and and then we there had several and, and then we had the mall the the recent florida mall mm-hmm. one right with the extra a terrestrial there right and you know it showed itself on the street it showed itself i showed the videos and everything on that podcast you know, we started getting a lot of resistance as soon as you put that up, too. We did. we did. A lot of resistance on Facebook. They started they started saying that we were naked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I don't get that. You know, I, I really don't. But it, it's just this is what he was talking about, is that when something comes out and it's real, um, you know, there's going to be people out there that are that are going to be that are going to discredit whatever. The, the, this is happening in real life, right? Uh, Facebook user says, you guys are right on spot, spot on for all the information I've gotten over the 50 years from personal experience 
it's all on point. Thank you. You know, we, we are trying to push this uh, to where you guys know exactly what's happening out there. Now, as we were talking about the mall, you know, they the, the police department came out laughing about it. They threw a little alien on there. They're like, no, this didn't happen. You know, but then we have all the video proof that we threw out there as well, right? So, and, and then we had... Remember the, the the Chinese balloon that they shot down, right? Mm-hmm. And then and then at the same time, there was like three UFOs that they shot down over Alaska. There was a, supposedly a tic tac, right. a tic tac, over the Yukon area. They yeah. did it over the Yukon area, and, and they crashed, and they couldn't find it. You know, right? They couldn't find interesting, it. right? <laughs> so, uh, and and then we didn't hear anything else about it. It was just like a lot of political nonsense was happening in the background to throw you off of the actual stories, right? Because there was a lot of stuff about the president, the son, yada yada, all that crap was happening at the same time. Why this happened as well? So there was a lot of you know, different things that were happening at the same time, right? And and this is what this guy was just talking and, and mentioning about that this is what they do. You know, they infiltrate ufologists out there that say they're ufologists, right? But then, you know, are they being a part of it? Or like he said, they don't, sometimes they don't know they're doing it. Right. Well, they're given access. Some of these people are given some access to uh, uh, what would be considered classified information. Right. And then what they do is they they take that and they run with it. And then they, as they slowly move along, they start changing their story. Right. Um, Yeah, we saw that. And if they don't change their story, they become what we like to call a gatekeeper in ufology. That's right. And that's a person that will. When you start getting closer to, to literally what they were trying to show, uh, then they start sending lawyers and they send all kinds of fun stuff towards you to say, hey, you're not allowed to talk about that. This information belongs to that person. Right. The hell, the hell I say. Right. Okay. This is, this is my answer to every one of those people. I bet you know where I'm getting ready to go. Yep. Yep. Everybody already knows. I'm Nikon. Okay. I got a P500 in my hand here. I got a P1000 right here. I've got, uh, here's, this is a D3200. I got 1,000 millimeter lenses for this thing. My statement about these in particular Nikon cameras, and I'm Nikon, you might be Canon, you might be Sony. I don't care what your, your camera is, but when you have your camera, if you turn your shutter speeds up, okay, You can create what's a slow motion effect, all right? And once you start making that slow motion effect take place, you slow these craft down that I've told everybody. Uh, They move uh, at their top speed. They're moving at about 22 miles per second, okay? When you you speed that thing up, everything starts going into the slow motion. It's still going to move past that really fast, okay? Uh, uh, Anna Kiones and Jody Gordon were the ones that showed me that, that this is how you do it. So you can, you can find your location. You aim, aim over my, my suggestion is over a mountaintop. Right. Okay. Mountains are where these things like to hide and you're going to see this stuff for yourself. You don't have to worry about a government for disclosure anymore. As long as you own your own camera, if you own your own camera, you're going to find these things yourself exactly. and they can't tell you anymore what you are seeing exactly. on the news because exactly. you're starting to film it now for yourself. Exactly. All right. So, and, and, um, and, and let's, let's talk about that too. Let's talk about that too. Uh, ufologist or euphrodigist, huh? Where you, you got know, those? Lots uh, of euphrologists. Euphrodigist. That's what we call them here at Alien Strand Disclosure Project. You know, are they in it for the black money or are they in it not knowingly or are they knowingly doing it? Right. And then that's that's the prop. That's the that's the part of it that that we're trying to break down here. And, you know, how do how do we know that they're doing it or they're not doing it now? 
me, I mean, I used to be a police officer back in the day, and we we talked about it a couple of times. You know, I know how to yep. re- I know how to read body language, right? I know how to read you know people's eyes, their movements, things like that when they're hiding something, right? Now, when I watch a lot of these podcasters, or not even not podcasters, but just people that in general that are in this non business thing, that you know, I mean, ufology that. When they're telling their stories, their eyes just kind of give it away to like, there's something back there that they're not saying, you know, and and right. and, and it's and it's the, the the bad part about that is that you don't know it's if it's they got a gun to their head, you don't know that we don't know that, or we don't know if if they're doing it on purpose to throw us off of the narrative of what it is exactly right, and and that's the crappy part about it, you know, it's it's like you don't know, but. And what gives it away is the eyes. Me, me, it's like the eyes are the windows to the soul, right? And you can pretty much see, you, know, you can see what's going on, you know, sometimes. And the eyes always give it away. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer of that. But, you know, and, and these people that call themselves ufologists out there that, you know, that are getting out disclosure and things like that. Some of it's a little bit too good to be true. You know what I mean? And, and, and their stories, I'm not putting anybody down on their disclosure. Nothing like that. Uh, it's just that. Some of it's a little bit, you know, it's like, hey, how did you get this information? How? Oh, I can't tell you. Well, how did you do? I can't tell you. Well, how did you do? I can't tell you. Oh, well, it's just, it's, where did you find this? Or where is this located? I can't tell you. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's let's get on with the program here. If anytime me and Terry talk about this, or we talk about ufology, anything like that, we you'll never hear us say that. Ever, we can't. We can't. We can't tell you. Uh, uh-uh, uh. We're gonna tell you. We're gonna tell you exactly where it came from. We're gonna. We're gonna tell you if even if we caught it ourselves on our cameras, we're gonna tell you what time, what place it was, where we were at, if there's any military bases in the area, if any helicopters flew over afterwards, anything like. We're gonna tell you everything. Even our ufologists out there in ASDP, they're gonna do the same thing out there. So. What I'm trying to tell you guys out there, there is no freaking veil here with ASDP. None of that crap is happening here. We are true. We are. You know why? Uh. Because Terry always says, we're citizen ufologists, man. That's why. We work as citizens. We are citizens first. You know, and. Uh, as well, as well as disclosure starts with your story and respect. Right. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to take the time to tell us what you have seen and you're going to take the time to to maybe even show us what you filmed. Not every time are you going to get a film of it. I mean, nine out of ten times when you're looking up and you see this thing, the last thing you're thinking about is bringing your cell phone out. Exactly. Uh, or any kind of camera. You're so you're so surprised with what you're seeing because it might be the first time you've seen it. It could be the tenth time you've seen it. I'm just as amazed every single time. Okay. Exactly. When when I find myself out in the middle of the wilderness, and I've got my team Oregon ufology with me, uh, you wouldn't believe how many times we just walk out there and we're just sitting there tapping on our pistols. Yep. Yep. And we have we're thinking about we, we, somebody should film this. Yep. <laughs> you know we're looking around going hey, none of us are filming this. So we're we're all sitting there just dumbfounded watching this thing travel sixty miles across the skyline. Right. And then stop above us, and and then move around us. Well, we we managed to finally get the camera going, but it was it was one of those situations, or it is one of those situations, to where you're you're still beside yourself because no matter how many times you see it, it's almost like the first time every single time. Exactly. It's like so. Once you see it, you just try to be ready. It's it's. Yeah. Something simple. Something simple. This is this right here is to get a camera like this, you can go to a pawn shop for sixty five bucks is what I paid for this one. Okay, this is a Nikon P five hundred. It's a eight hundred and twenty two point five by eight hundred and ten millimeter camera super zoom. Okay. You can pick these things up super cheap. They're they you can get them at second hand stores, you can get them at pawn shops. Um, Nikon makes really good cameras. Um, you can get Sony's. Oh my gosh, the Sony's even got a better processor than what I've got. But 
and, and, uh, I'm, I'm Nikon. Exa- <laughs> but yes. you get yourself get yourself a camera that you can sit and film these things with. And when you see it, if you can remember, film it. Exactly. Exactly. And and I brought up a picture of the secrets kept underground, like the secret pyramid in Alaska. We've, you know, if, if you saw my uh, my war underground uh, uh, on Patreon, uh, go. I highly recommend it. Go check it out. That gives I give you a lot of insight on on things that were happening underground behind the veil as well. Right. This is what this podcast is about. Right. Now I'm gonna I I, I put this video out on on that podcast, but I'm gonna show it right now before we close out. So that way you guys get a, a little bit of a logistics of uh, if you guys have never seen it or Phil Schneider before, uh, I am going to put his video out there. It's it's a very short one. It's about maybe three, three and a half minutes. All right. So let's because I want his whatever he says is super important. All right. And I want you guys to to listen to what he has to say. It's an older video, but of course, he was murdered later after that and, and, and during that time. But. I want you guys to see it and, look, and, and listen to what he has to say. Here we go. Let's watch it. Casually mention to you something that's very scary indeed. And tell you what the alien agenda is. And it's going to sound very familiar. The alien agenda is the complete takeover of this planet, the killing off of five, six to seven eighths of the world's population by the year 2029. U.S. military has known about this for 45 years. They've told no one. As far as I know, I'm the only person standing before a crowd talking about the alien agenda, secretively. Okay. They, back in 1954, I'll give you a quick overview. There was the created 1954 treaty where Eisenhower signed a pact with the known alien species of the time, there were three at the time, and said that we're going to deal in high technology, but you can take a few head of cattle and a few human beings and you can experiment on them. It's unthinkable. It's stuff straight out of the Nazi death camps, and I'm kidding you not, it's plain BS, and it's got to stop. Now, the great in 1954 treaty would have been violated. After, after the great firefight, the alien-human war, I am the only living survivor talking about it worldwide at all. The only one. The other two are in nursing homes in Canada, and the Canadian government refuses to allow any U.S. people, including myself, to talk to them because they are afraid of kidnapping. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is I am a direct threat to the entire system. The New World Order, the alien agenda is one in the same. It's world takeover and the decimation of the population of this planet. Now, I'm going to tell you something a little bit different about the alien species. The bad news ones, there are nine races of alien populations to look at a human being as a bag of food. They're not cannibals. They don't eat the flesh and the bones and all that kind of stuff. They use the glandular secretions of animals and human beings as a mixture of the vitamins for their food. They get high off of our adrenal gland substances called adrenal chrome. It's, a, it's something like uh, cocaine to them. Now, what can we do about it? We didn't, right now, if we do nothing, we can do nothing about it, and it will continue to go on. Basically, we'll be led in the dark, and you'll keep seeing more and more people disappear. Right now, there's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives, cannot be traced anywhere. They haven't been murdered. Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases, and they are summarily done away with, and they are literally eaten. Now, that is a scary thing indeed. Some, and I'm not asking you to believe me in total. I am asking you to seriously do enough homework that you can go out in through the public record, through the congressional records, find out who's voting for what, and go from there. Do your own program. Do your own agenda. 
and do your own speaking out. And if enough of us do this, there is some saving grace. Exactly. Do your own research. Do everything like that so there's enough saving grace. And that was a beautiful end uh, that he said on his speech. You know, um, like I said, be prepared. Yeah, always be prepared. But the reason I threw that out today is because I want you guys to understand that people were going through this back then and, and a lot of things were happening. And of course, he fought back. He fought back, right? And unfortunately, for at that time when he fought back, it, it came back and it, and it nipped him in the bud and he ended up getting murdered for it. But, and the, he was giving out the information of what was happening behind the veil, right? That's exactly what was happening behind the veil. And... And he says, I don't, I don't need you to believe me or not. You don't have to believe me. But I'm just telling you exactly what's happening, you know. And either go with it or you don't, you know. So, and then the other video of that, I believe he's a congressman, you know, trying to get disclosure. Trying to get, you know, new people in there to, to give out the information because he knows it's there. The guy mm -hmm. knows it's there. So... And then they use a lot of these people that are in these higher YouTube uh, watch lists and things like that. They they target them right away because they say, hey, we can use that guy to cover that story. And we'll just change it up a bit to where it doesn't look so much. And we'll throw them in a different direction. Right. And that's what this podcast is about. This is what me and Terry were trying to explain to you, you guys tonight about uh, what behind the veil really is. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, I hope you guys paid attention tonight. This was a great podcast. And, and uh, uh, Terry, you got anything to end it with here tonight? More cowbell. More cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, disclosure starts with your story and respect. ASDP stands for Alias Grand Disclosure Project, which is part of Alien Strand Podcast. I want to make sure everybody knows that the two and two are together and that um, I am your research director of ASDP. Uh, Donald Ledesma is the director of ASDP and that we have several members throughout the entire world. And again, one more time, disclosure starts with your story and respect. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you, brother, for, for being on the show today. I really appreciate you and, and all your insights. You know, we missed you. We hadn't seen you in a while, but keep on doing what you're doing, and uh, we're, we're, we're going we're to cross our fingers, man, for you, brother. So uh, you pass your test and get out there and, and enjoy driving because that's, I did that for 16, 17 years. I love that. I, st I still enjoy doing it, but uh, we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to be there right there with you, brother. I appreciate you, man. All right. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful that I passed all my tests up to this point. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll talk to you here in a bit. Just hang on in the background. Okay. All right, brother. All right, they're out there they're saying, thank you, no more cowbell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, everybody knows what we're talking about. Thank you, gentlemen, for your efforts. Uh, you're always appreciated. Everybody's out there. Uh, just chiming in on everything. Have a great weekend, everybody. You know, I'm just reading all the comments that everybody's throwing out there. Good night. <laughs> yeah, it's coming, brother. Uh, I already know who that is. Uh, thank you, guys. You know, uh, everybody's just saying thank you. I hope you guys really enjoyed this podcast tonight. Uh, I hope it you got some information on the dark parts of ufology as well and what happens during a lot of these cover-ups and, and things like that because it, it just... It, you know, unfortunately, it, it works against us, man. It works all against us. And we just have to stick together. I keep saying it over and over. Let's just all stick together as one. And, I mean, are we going to get all the answers? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. But at least we can get close enough to it. To where at least one day, you know, like I said, if these things come and they land on the ground, we're good with it, man. I mean, we already know what's what's up. We already know what their, their background is. We already know the agenda. We already we got a lot of the... the uh, information while we were digging and digging and digging right in the background but one day it's going to happen one day you know sue harrison thank you says you guys do a great job keep up the good work thank you so much uh like i said you know i appreciate you guys watching tonight listening on on uh, spreaker tonight uh, live we are live on 
that platform, Spreaker. We're going to be on iHeartRadio, Spotify, all those other ones as well. You know, if you like this podcast, please give us a thumbs up. Share it if you want to. Share it to as many people as you can. If you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. Give us a like, subscribe. If you're on X, you know, you could have you could have chimed in. You could have chimed in. It would have came out. Your comments would come out on X as well. So you can always watch us on X on there too. You know, so we're on all different kinds of platforms. I really appreciate you guys. You guys have yourselves a good day. Have yourselves a good evening. And have yourselves a good night. Watch the middle part two. Go watch it. Now, go watch it right now. After this, go watch it. Bye.